right, good morning. Uh, January 22nd, it's Friday. How are you guys? Uh, I'm doing well. We are uh, getting ready for Joey to come home this weekend. He's bringing the girls and we're gonna have a little thing in memory of mom and we're going to have a little Mexican feast. She loved Mexico. And actually, so do I. I just love the colors and the food and all that kind of stuff. So everybody's logging in now. I hope you have had a good week. Very excited to get on with what we're doing now. The applique, uh, the birdhouse quilt. Applique always, aka applique always. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, good morning, everybody. Today, finally, we're getting a little rain. Oh, please, we need rain. I think it's kind of breaking through where after this weekend or whatever, it will rain like crazy. Hey, Sue, I still have one of your cookies left. The other day, I had to run the breakfast cookies you sent. The other day, I had to run somewhere, and I didn't have time for lunch, and it saved me. Man, they were so good. If you want to type it in so everybody can see, they're... It's a foundation where they sell things, and Sue, who comes to my retreat every year, sent me that and a bar of soap, and it's not like you're eating a cookie. It's like you're eating a really good granola bar for you. So thank you so much. I probably will be, or I think you might have hooked me, Sue. <laughs> That's how good it is. So, okie dokie, good. I see people coming on. First of all, I want to say thank you for kindness, Sue, and so many of you. You've been so kind. And I received something yesterday in the mail that is so cool. I, d I don't know, I don't know who it's from. And so if it's supposed to be a secret, okay. But if it's not supposed to be a secret, I would love to know. Uh, when I did my mom's little memorial thing, I showed two images at the end. I showed one of my mom when she was a little girl in the snow, and then one when we were on a boat going to Santorini when she was 80. And that little, that picture of her, well, really, how many do we really have when she was a little girl? Let's get real. But this picture just meant so much to me. And let me show you what, we, well, let me just hold it up. This is on a slate stone and Look at that, you guys. I, it's just fabulous. And then it comes like with a little holder so I can put it in like this. And there we go. What I'm gonna do this afternoon with my daughter when she comes over is we're gonna build like a little shrine area and I'm gonna put some of Dee's favorite stuff there. And you can be certain that this is going to be there. So I don't know who gave this to me. Thank you so much. I also got from Florida a really great gift basket of food. And I think I know who sent it to me, but I have to confirm I got reached out to her and I didn't get anything back. So, you know, it's lovely if you want to do it anonymous, but boy, I thank you so much. This is so sweet. I can feel your love. I can feel the hearts from people. Before we get going on our applique, I wanted to show you two things that I found on the internet this morning. The first I wanna show you, I had no idea about, uh, for, well, first let's talk about the inauguration. It was, in my book, fabulous, it, fabulous. And then that thing that night, I mean, which of us gets to go to a presidential ball? Nobody. And it was just so great how they handled it. I mean, how everybody has pivoted, I hate that word, because that's the word, has been amazing. But they sh somewhere on the internet, well, it was on Facebook, I saw the full coat that she was wearing, the white coat. I wonder how many of you saw this. So those flowers are the 50 states of the U.S. They're state flowers embroidered on. That is beautiful. You know, I was, uh, Fran Kelly and I were texting back and forth during the inauguration talking about the clothes because like I told you, that's what I love. And boy, nothing, nothing came close to this. This, this takes my breath away. And I hope it ends up in the Smithsonian if you want to get right down to it. 
And then there was another one of her dress, and I think her dress had stuff on it. And then that explained what was on her face mask, too. So absolutely beautiful. And then the other, the oh, then the other thing that's kind of a fun thing to do is there were uh, things on the internet that were all the first ladies' outfits, get-ups, going way back, images. It's great to look at. Absolutely great. So <clears throat> the next thing that's going around, and John said, you can't do this. And I said, well, just watch me. <laughs> Tell me I can't do something and just watch. The Bernie memes are killing me, okay? And I know that he probably is enjoying the heck out of them. But this one, I put one on my Facebook, and then right after I put that one on, I found this one. <laughs> Your husband at the quilt shop. Now, let me tell you about the mittens. So when Bernie lost, there was a second grade school teacher who did not know him, but felt really bad for him and went and knit him those mittens or mittens like that. And so she sent them to him and then Bernie uh, gave them to someone who was cold, like a homeless person or something like that. And so subsequently, more people are sending him knit mittens. So that is just fabulous. Okay, knitters, you're right in there with us quilters. Fabulous. So what are we doing? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I want to tell you the quilt, the pattern behind me is available. And I spent inauguration day ripping off darn near almost all the daisies because how I, I thought I had a real cool new way to prepare stuff and really what I did was I screwed it up in spades all right so I'm not going to tell you what it was you don't need to know but we're starting with finished applique we're going to go through all the different ways you can applique and then depending on the project you're doing or what fits best for you that's what you're going to use, all right? I don't want you to rip through this pattern. I just don't because I want you to try different things and see what shoe fits the best. So let's take a look. I got to find this other camera. What is really the basic difference between raw? Uh, Roxanne, a flying geese would be fabulous. It would be absolutely fabulous. Okay, so this is raw edge applique, and that means I've used some sort of fusible. Then I did a finished stitch around the outside edge, and I believe I demoed this for something else we did. We're going to do raw edge down the road. I want to start with finished, all right? So let's take a look at these circles here because I don't I have kind of a three ring circus going on here. This is finished edge, and this has been done by machine too. And there's lots of ways, I wonder how close I can get this and then really zero in on it. There. Yeah, that's machine done. It almost looks like hand, doesn't it? And that's with shot cottons. Love shot cottons. But anyway, so you've got the choice of raw or finished. And it depends on the fate of the quilt with which I'm going, what I'm going to use. So I can't tell you which way is better. What's better is whatever works for you. Now, one thing you're going to want to get, and I'm going to be talking about a bunch of different items that you're going to want to collect. And probably most of you has this stuff in your stash, but we do have the pattern up now. You tape it together. All right. You go to learn, you go to projects, and then you click the birdhouse pattern, and then you scroll down to the bottom and you print it out and you tape it together. And this is what it's going to look like. Kristen did a really, really, really great job. Oh shoot, let me go that way. All right, she shows you how to do it. So thank you for that, Kristen. The other thing, it's not quite that necessary, but to know that you're kind of in scale, this is going to measure two inches. Mine came right on the money, so that's great. I mean, it's not as imperative as it is like for the block of the month we're doing, but, you know, it kind of keeps it in, in scale. Up behind me, the background before the pinwheels, just to recap, measures... 
30 finished by 40 finished or 32 and a half by 40 and a half raw. And then the pinwheels finish four inches. And what if you miss that, go back on Monday and I tell you how to do it. There's also these instructions too when you get to that area. A couple of you posted that you couldn't get to it. Just go to a different browser. I find I could get there fine on Firefox, but sometimes if something is goofy, just go to something else and then you'll be able to get it. Um, would flying geese, yeah, I already said that. Yeah, in fact, flying geese is what I did on the original one with the mailboxes and mathematically it will work out fine. All right, so cool. I can't wait to see what you guys do. I can't wait. The other thing that you're gonna wanna get your hands on for finished applique is some sort of template plastic. Uh, you could use a cereal box and all that, but I always have this in my room, always, just because it's a go-to. Because ultimately what I'm going to do are cut out my shapes. I have a whole pile of little shapes that go with th this quilt that are off that pattern that Kristen put together for you. So then I can go and I can make all my little finished appliques. So what I wanna do is talk about the old fashioned way, how I learned to prepare applique. And let me tell you, it was a pain in the rear end for sure. I never learned how to needle turn. If you know how to needle turn, yay for you, you don't have to do any of this nonsense. But I think for a lot of people, it's really hard, you guys. So this is how I learned. Back in the day, what we would do and you're gonna love this, is we would cut out a shape. Let me get that zoomed in. Out of typing paper. I wonder if any of you are so young, you don't even know what typing paper is. All right, and then what you would do is you would cut out the shape, the finished shape that you want, all right? And then you would, then you would, um, I pin it down, and then I based around it with thread. And then what would happen is, is back in the day, I would do hand applique, but this would also work for machine. You would turn it over, you would applique it down, and then you would slit the back and pull the paper out after you remove the basting stitches. So I started this one yesterday and I'm like going, wow, this really is a pain in the patootie. So you just go like this, Trust me, there's so many better ways. It's ridiculous. And then you would do the tip. Actually, now I, I do the tip first. And then I do that. Oh, it broke, well, and so forth. And then you just work your way around, okay? And just remember, however it looks out here is how it is really going to look. So you can imagine the joy of quilters when the spray starch method came to be. And what it is, is you take two pieces of freezer paper, and mind you, we're not even talking about putting it down at this point, we're just talking about getting it ready. So here's two pieces of freezer paper and dull side, shiny side, dull side, shiny side. And then, I wonder if I turned my iron on. Yeah, I did. And then what you do is you iron it together and subsequently what you're getting is just a thicker piece of paper to, to work around. So there, I've ironed it together. Then I'm going to, we're gonna work with hearts, okay? And there is actually a heart on one of the birdhouse doors. Then what you're gonna do is I'll use like my friction pin and I'll draw around using my template. And then I'll cut it out exactly the correct shape, all right? So again, two layers of freezer paper cut to the exact shape. The reason hearts are good to practice with and oft times that is what your teacher will have you do is because you have a point as well as an indentation. And those are the tricky places when it comes to ap uh, prepared applique. So I'm gonna take this iron back. 
I'm going to iron this down because it's going to stick to it because of that one side of the shiny. Then I'm going to take my scissors. I wonder if I need to take this up just a little bit. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut about a, a quarter inch, not bigger than a quarter inch, that's for sure. I can feel it lifting a little, so I will go back and iron it again. Uh, if you do not have good sharp scissors, it's time to get with the program. I love Karen K. Buckley scissors. These are Kai's. These are good too. But what's so nice about the Kai and the Karen K. Buckley, we have Karen K. Buckley in the store, is that they're serrated. So they cut very, very nicely. Then the next thing you do is these are ones I just acquired and these are Karen K. I will go in and I will cut right down to all like maybe a thread away from the paper. Put your little cap back on because these are just super uber sharp and wonderful and you don't want to wreck them. So the next thing you're going to do is this is the wand iron I love. It's Hobico. They're very difficult to find. A uh, clover one is, would work for you, but you want some kind of little wand iron, especially if you're going to be doing complicated shapes. This is really not that complicated, but the more complicated shapes you're doing, the more you're going to need something small. And it was funny, we just taped a show with, um, oh, shoot, what? Well, Okay, this is embarrassing, brain fart. Um, and she was using a big iron to do this. And I go, why aren't you using your little wand iron? And she said, because I lent it to a friend. Okay, there you go. So starch, this is Best Press. Sandra Mullen, Best Press. And then you, you can use this. You can also use just cheapo starch, all right? It, it doesn't matter. I think in the olden days, I pretty much just used cheapo starch, all right? So you can get this at the grocery store for, you know, hardly anything. And then if you still have the cap, you can spray some into the cap. And I don't still have the cap. Imagine that. So I'm going to spray this in here. Trust me, it's there. I haven't, you guys, I haven't, I'm going to put some best press in here too. I have not done this in so long. I hope I can do it with ease and grace, all right? I'm going to try turning on the light and see if that makes it better. I think we're better without. All right, so then what you're going to do is you're going to, with a little paintbrush, you're going to go in and you're going to paintbrush the fabric. Oh, the other thing that I didn't mention, shoot, is that when I cut this out, I cut it out so that this is on the straight of grain and then up here is on the bias. So let me see if I can get this back out. Because I think that that's important. That's an important consideration. Yeah, there we go, sweet thing. Yeah, so see this is kind of on the straight of grain and then the bias comes up here. So you soak this little guy. One thing I like about this little iron, and really at Quilters Select, we should get with the program and get and make an iron. It has how hot it gets. Then using a stiletto and using your iron, you're just gonna hold this down with, oh yeah, I remember how to do it. And you're going to, boy, this iron is not as hot as it should be. I have it on hot. You know, that's the thing with irons, you guys, is that they also heat in waves, so to speak. They uh, go up and they go down and they go up and they go down. So then I'm going to go down here to the tip. Very excited about this project and the learning that we're going to be doing. I'm going to hold this down. I'm folding the tip up. iron it. Then I'm going to bring this side up. Hey, little guy. I'm actually going to put a little more slop on this side.
Don't use a stiletto or a seam ripper or something. Don't use your fingers for obvious reasons. Okay. Get some more. The straight lines are the easy ones. The curves and all that's where it gets tricky. Because it's not going down real easily. Actually, I should just do the whole darn thing. Or at least more than that. And this is just a little paintbrush. Nothing fancy. Actually, I use it in Joanne's class. See how I'm pulling it? Now, when you get to the curves, something tricky happens. I want to get this down more. This is very important. And I'm serious. Look how I am not ironing all the way to the raw edge. I'm, I'm letting it ruffle. If you iron it all the way to the raw edge, you've got a really good shot that you're going to get tucks in there. Once it's wonderful and smooth, then you can uh, go like that. And I'll probably take it to my big girl iron too when I'm done here. Oh, we did get a bunch of Panasonics in stock, the cordless, if you're interested. We had a run on those. I need more starch in there. That went down to nothing. Okay. It's heavy duty starch too. All right, so here we go. Don't go all the way to the edge. And then when it's beautiful, and then look down here, I'm pulling down into the little crack. Once I get it the way I like it, then I can go back and do my thing. And again, I have not done this in a while. It's not my preferred way, but it's one of the ways. There we go. So once I have a shape like this heart, I can use it maybe 12 times. John's bringing me in notes. See how I'm not going all the way? This was a game changer for me. An absolute game changer. I, and I'll tell you ergonomically, I am not in a good position. All right. So, I think that looks really good. What I might do now, um, I am going to now take my big iron and take care of business. One of the guests we had on ran glue or something, but oh, it wasn't this technique. I learn so much from the quilt show. It is insane. Absolutely insane. All right. So... There you go. Now what I would do is, well, don't do anything. That's the truth. But what I would do is when it's time to get it, looks like more starch there, still wet. I would get my background designed. I mean, I would get my appliques all designed. And then I can either stitch it on by hand or by machine. And that's going to be another lesson. We're just preparing shapes today, okay? So I would put it on, I would applique it down, and then I would go on the back side of the backing. I would make a little slit, maybe even trim it out and of the fabric, and then, oh no, wait, what am I saying? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, that's not what you do. I just screwed up. I told John I was gonna screw this up. What I'm gonna do then is go like that, and my little shape is ready to go. What was I thinking? I am your fearless leader. Okay. There. Now, there you go. Cuter than buttons, and I can use this shape again. So, what do you think of that? Um, is it really okay to get wool pressing mat uh, with starch? Oh, probably not. I probably would use 
I would probably put some cloth on top of it or something like that. I'm just, I'm just demoing stuff here. Thank you for saying that. And I had to get an ironing surface over to me. So yeah, probably not. And also you would do not want to put your wool mat on your, um, rotary mat. Okay. You don't want to do that in iron because it will go through, but you want to know a secret. This is a prototype. We have this with wool on one side, cutting mat on the other. So the cutting mat is going to act as a mask and it will not warp this one. So prototype, I just let you in on a secret. <laughs> so let's see what questions that we have. All right. Acorn Easy Press works in the applic applicator instead of starch. Yeah, that would work. That would work really well. Thank you so much for that. Then we've got finish size. The finish size without the pinwheels is 32 by 40. With the pinwheels, well, you have to add eight to each one. Without the pinwheels, it's 32 by 40. All right. Let's see, is starch on the wool mat a problem? Okay, we just talked about that. All right, so let me talk a little bit here about the quilt. I Yesterday, or Monday, I'm sorry, when, or Tuesday, when we started, the days all blend together. What I pointed out was that I did do a couple little grays, and that's just a matter to work your eye around the whole surface. Get up there, okay? The other thing is that I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, I am going to put a couple more daisies on and I'm gonna lop it up into the border because I just think that's such a cute thing. And then you'll see this one bird stand here and we're gonna learn how to do all this stuff, goes all the way down. These I stopped short and I said on Tuesday, maybe don't sew this on. Well, when I started really working with it, I, realized I picked up, I sewed it all on and then I picked it apart and then I shoved it in and I picked it apart and then I shoved it in and then I sewed it up tight. <clears throat> so why don't I use the uh, freezer paper method anymore? I'll tell you why. And why I was so happy when Rosa came out with her technique is that when I was doing this book, uh, by the time the book was over, hand applique, I prepared all of it with spray starch. I had developed tennis elbow to the point because I couldn't, I had to put so much weight on my little thing to get it to work. And so I actually got turned down for medical insurance because of it. It's when John quit his job to come work for TQS and I got turned down for it. It took a year and a half of wearing one of those dumb things for it to come back. I couldn't even put dishes up in the cupboard. So if you do use this technique, make sure that you're ergonomically okay and don't press down too hard. Now, I will tell you one of the birdhouses in fact, it was this one I did do that way. So you kind of have to look at the situation and decide what to do. I would at least give it a try if you've got the materials. Give it a try. Make a couple little flowers, little petals or something like that. See what you think of the whole thing, right? That's what this is all about. Um, could you use liquid stay flow starch? Oh, Lois. Hi, Lois. I got to call. Whoops, I got to call you. Um... All you want is just liquid spray starch. I don't think it matters what brand. I, I really don't. But just be really careful, okay? Because that was just a big fat bummer when that happened to me. So what's going to happen is Adair is going to come over. Okay, John's running in with more questions. Adair is going to come over and then we're going to do our thing to get ready for Grandma D. Uh, pattern for the background. It is, it is, you go to projects it's there oh yeah it's there no yeah you go to projects no you go to learn go to learn go to projects click that it will be at the top but then it's going to say download here then then you're going to hit that and you're going to go where did it go it's at the bottom it's all the way at the bottom okay what's that one and then john you're not going anywhere come here how about shadowing through the petals? 
Yes, that is an issue. So you can then go cut out behind. That's what I was trying to solve when I screwed up the whole quilt. Okay, but that's when you can go cut out. You're going to come talk about the website. I refuse to. Oh. <laughs> hey, if you ever want to know who not to hire. So um, on the website, it's going to be delayed another week. So we're hoping February 1st that we would take the site down. It's going to take us a week to get the site up and going. And during that time, we'll have a temporary website. Can but they we... get their BOM on that on February 1st? Will they, can they get their BOM on the temporary? Yes. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll have things. Um, and so, but it had we had problems like you couldn't log in on a mobile phone. So so is is it more like it. the devices now that we're having the big problems with? Yeah, it's getting okay. the mobile site ready. But you guys are going so. to love it. Oh, tell them why they're going to love it. The searchability is crazy. Oh. Tell about the one poor lady that ordered something. This yeah. is like hilarious. We've had two people who accidentally found our fake site and yeah. bought things. <laughs> That was very nice. So John called him up. How did you find this? No, what's nice is that Google found us. So, so, anyways, patience is a virtue. I know that, but good grief, right? So have a good uh, weekend. I will. I'm so grateful that I could be with all of my four grandchildren at one time. We haven't told Lennox yet. She loves Lev and Nava so much. My, we aren't telling her because stuff can happen and we don't want to break her little heart. There's been too many disappointments this year. She, she, I put money on the table. The girl's going to cry when she sees her cousins. And then we're going to end up with a sleepover on Saturday night. So, so on Monday, what we're going to do is finished applique. I'm going to call it the Rosa Rojas way. And that's the one I typically go to. But then yet I have another one on Wednesday that you might be interested in. Again, you've got to find the shoe that fits, all right? So have a fabulous, oh, the other thing too, Pat, I want to say to everybody is that this is, what did I just do to myself? This is, this is an extension of thequiltshow.com. This is not thequiltshow.com. We got a letter from somebody saying, well, why do I pay if I'm getting this all free on YouTube? This is my gift to you to get through this pandemic. And as and now I'm embarrassed to say I'm hooked on it. <laughs> so you're stuck with me. And uh, the show is completely different. We've got spectacular offers. My guess is you can still get the $39.95. And we so appreciate you supporting us. It's because you do support us that I can do this. So Anyways, have a wonderful weekend. I know I'm going to. And if you sent me this and you want me to know who you are, please get hold of me via customer service, via Facebook or whatever. This just was such a lovely, gentle gesture. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.